Hey, what's going on, ladies and gents? Welcome back to the Genshin Impact video. I'm going to be making a Yai Miko guy. It's been a pleasure to travel around Teva with from her witty phrases to her strength in combat. Before we delve too deep into the video, here are timestamps for all the key points in the video. Now, first step to getting to know Yai Miko is understanding her kit. Your investment on Yai should help you get far. Leveling her up to 90 should be a given, as her electrotype reactions will take account your level on Yai Miko. But for this guide, just to show with minimal investment, she'll be 80 out of 90. The weapon choices for her are plentiful. But if you use the correct weapon, you'll have a much grander time. Yaimiko can make great work of any weapon that has crit damage on it, as this will help her output the most damage through her burst and skills using crit. The Widsith is an excellent example of a great weapon. Previously, no one can truly use the Widsith to its greatest potential, as its passive has three outcomes and are all outputted by chance. However, in Yaimiko's case, can make use of all the passive in the Widsith, making it a great weapon for her to utilize to her full potential. Of course, there are other solid weapons for her that we can definitely tell the difference on, such as her main 5-star weapon. Kagura's Verity gives you a main stat of critical damage, as well as a decent base attack. Her passive allows you to gain the Kagura Dance effect. Whenever you use an elemental skill, your elemental skill damage is going to be increased by 12% for 16 seconds. This can stack to 3 times. After getting all 3 stacks, your character will also get a 12% all elemental damage bonus, including Electro, which is what you need. Now, there are other 5-star weapons, but they aren't really that great, including the Lost Prayers of the Sacred Wind. Although, if you do have that weapon, it would be an okay idea to use it, as long as your Yai is your main DPS. Now, for all you small spenders, the Solar Pearl would be a great choice. The Solar Pearl allows you to get an increase of your elemental burst damage by 20% after using an elemental skill. After your normal attacks hit, your elemental skill and elemental burst damage will be increased by 20%. Now, why this is really good is because get that nice 20% no matter what. After you just hit once with your normal attack, this will allow you to get that 20% damage bonus for both your elemental skill as well as your elemental burst. After using elemental burst and skill, you get an increase of normal attack damage by 20%, making her an all-round great main DPS or sub DPS for this current weapon. Now, other weapons such as the Dodoko Tails, which has a decent attack percentage on it, but a low base attack will do okay if you want to use Yaimiko as a charged attacker. Now, I wouldn't personally recommend this as her charge attack, even though it does deal some good damage, it doesn't bring out the true potential in Yaimiko. Solar Pearl is a great choice, especially for those who have it with refinement. I can go on and on with weapon choices, but we have other things to get to. Now, by giving her the correct artifact set for your own purpose, such as a burst quick sew up DPS or a main DPS, you're going to have different sets for the best damage output. Currently, on this guide, you'll see Yaimiko use the Emblem of Severed Fate set, enabling her to deal more damage on her burst. We also do compare it with another set as we use the Thundering Fury as well as the Glad 2 piece sets together. This should serve as a factor for her main DPS capability. Although the racials will differ in comparison, Yai's build is a little more complicated than we initially thought. The added elemental mastery factor makes it much more difficult to really find the best set for her to utilize. We will get into that a little bit later. Now, for those of you who want to use a 4 piece of the new Bless of Blush set on her, this allows her to be a proper burst support. Not a terrible idea. This allows you to really provide your team with extra damage from her off field skill and large scale burst attack. Speaking of a field skill, Will the tenacity of the Malith work set on Yai Miko? Well, to put it shortly, yes, but her damage through her burst will in turn suffer, as she doesn't benefit from the added 20% HP increase, so sticking to the new blessed is much better suited for the job. To truly really understand why you should summon Yai is to understand her talent. We use level 6 talents on all fronts to make it as reasonable and accessible to everyone who wants to use Yai Miko and get a general understanding of what her kit provides in terms of damage and support capabilities. Yai's auto attacks are fun to use and great to look at. Who doesn't want to see you use Yai and summon forth Kitsune spirits to come aid her in battle? Her auto attacks and charge attacks are definitely a little different than your usual catalyst user. When Yai uses her auto attacks, the attacks aren't instant, as are the likes of Kokomi or even Yenfei. But I'm talking on all fronts. 
Her auto and charge attack starts from the initial location where Yamika currently is and the attack goes on to move from the initial location to a bit of a linear pathing from the point of your initial location to your opponent. Obviously. This also includes her charge attack in which she performs a lightning bolt strike that hits at a linear AoE from the start location. These could be helpful if you want to hit multiple opponents in the same pathing but at the great cost of casting speed. Her skill damage ratios are not that great but they aren't that bad either in terms of charge attack for her elemental skill this turret like object named seshu sakura periodically strikes opponents with a lightning bolt dealing electro damage and yes this is single target and not aoe this is most unfortunate because an ability like this having aoe would make her so much stronger when she has a Seshu Sakura on the field, this skill starts at a level 1. It incrementally increases to allow a level 3 as its max. Unless you have constellations, then you could have a 4. When you have 3 Seshu Sakuras on the field, which is the maximum amount you can have on the field, you can only have 3 of the Seshu Sakuras on the field at a time. If you try to make a 4th, the first one casted will be destroyed and replaced with the new one that you have summoned. The duration of this skill is 14 seconds. Because it's 14 seconds and the cooldown is 4 seconds, this makes the skill inevitably always on the field, which is a pretty darn handy thing when you need it to be a sub DPS. So this will help her kit benefit a lot from elemental skill and sort of makes it so her kit does revolve around her Seshu Sakuras. When it comes to her elemental burst though, it has one of the largest scaling in the entire game, alongside the likes of Eula. Her initial strike hits for a decent 364 on a level 6 talent. But with more Seshu Sakuras on the field, it does more damage for each of the turrets. On a level 6 talent, each tank code Thunderbolt deals a whopping 467% more damage in each bolt. This is a superb burst ability, really outputting the most damage on the field. The only downside to this is the long cooldown duration and terrible 90 energy cost for the burst, making it much more difficult to have this up at most of the time, especially when you gain 3 elemental particles with Yaimiko's elemental skill. 3 only. Now, what's nice about Yaimiko's kit, we have to notice that after using your elemental burst, you will destroy every single one of your turrets, Seshu Sakuras, right? So when you do destroy the these turrets you're going to deal more damage as a result as well as you're going to remove them from the field so after you use this make sure to summon them back as it instantly resets through her pass now what's nice about yai's kit and her passive talents in which she resets her elemental skill cooldown based on the amount of seshu sakuras destroyed in her elemental burst allowing you to have your seshu sakuras on the field all the time Superbly done, Hoyers. Her other passive allows her Seshu Sakuras to deal more damage by the amount of elemental mastery your Yai has. Every point of elemental mastery Yai has will increase your Seshu Sakuras elemental damage by 0.15%. Now, if you have around 100 elemental mastery, your Seshu Sakuras will deal 15% more damage. That is pretty good. If you have maybe 300 EM, you can have around 45% bonus in damage. So about her constellation, her first constellation allows her to get 8 elemental energy for herself. This is a pretty big thing as Yai provides almost no energy to herself, provides almost 3 for each elemental skill duration. That sucks, that really does not help her a lot. Now for her second constellation, this is pretty nice if you want her elemental skill to be a much stronger choice as you can get it to a level 4 instead of your regular level 3 and not only this but the attack range is also increased by 60 percent constellation 3 increases your elemental skill by three talents constellation 4 whenever your seshu sakura hits an opponent the electro damage of all of your party members including yaimiko get a 20 percent increase this is really good if you want your yaimiko to deal more damage on your seshu sakuras of course and this will also help in turn with her elemental burst damage the constellation allows your burst to get an increase of three talents as well the seshu sakuras attack which is your elemental skill will ignore 60 percent of the opponent's defense this is pretty big, especially because Yaimiko is a sub DPS in this turn. So if you have Yaimiko at C6, she will deal so much damage as a sub DPS. Now we move on to talking about her team compositions and what teams you can benefit from while using your Yaimiko. Personally, I'd have the two main supports that have taken the game by storm being both Kazaha and Bennett. Kazaha allows you to shred using Viridescent and gives elemental damage bonus based on his EM. Bennett, as we all know, increases your attack. 
quite a lot. Having both will exponentially increase your AI's damage, really making her effective on the field, but we obviously know this, Kaza and Bennett have been a duo that has not been dethroned in a really long time. Now, if you do not have Kaza, I can see you use Sucrose, as she is able to shred using Verdescent, as well as transfer EM using her abilities, pretty nifty from our alchemist in training. Plus, if you have her at C6, she can give you an elemental bonus damage of 20%. This is pretty good stuff. You're also going to need a decent battery, Fischl being a top contender since she is both on the banner as well as Oz provides a bunch of electro particles as well. The Raiden Shogun is an excellent choice as well to really help out your burst do more damage as well as get your burst back with energy restoration skill. Other niche characters to help your Yaimiko could be an Albedo for the EM transfer or a C6 Diona. Now here are some teams that I have composed for you guys or compiled for you guys so you guys can see or get an idea of what I am thinking through these teams. Now with Yai, Raiden Shogun, Sucrose and Ben it, you can get a lot of energy through Red Raiden Shogun, as well as Sucrose to help with the EM transfer, Viridescent Shred, and if you have her C6, get the elemental damage bonus, so that is pretty good, as well as Bennett to help you get that a little more damage from your AI Miko. This is really good if you do not have Kazuha on your team, if you don't even have Sucrose or Kazuha, you, you can use Venti for the Viridescent Shred for grouping, as well as it gives 15 energy to the element that Venti has swirled. So if it's Electro, you'll get 15 energy back to your Yai Miko. This team is also pretty interesting and I find pretty fun in my personal opinion. You have Yai Miko, you have Fischl, you have the Traveler, as well as Bennett, or maybe even another healer, you could have Jean, you could have Diona here. Any healer at the end will be fine, but I do prefer Bennett. Now, if you have Fischl, you're going to easily get some energy particles back and it will be an easy battery for Yai Miko. But if that's not enough, you can have your Traveler also get energy back through her energy restoration skills as well as energy restoration burst. This is an excellent combo if you want your Yai Miko to really get her burst back all the time. Now, this team is also pretty interesting as well as you have Yai Miko, you have the Raiden Shogun, you have Sara as well as Diona. Now, the Raiden Shogun is going to provide energy recharge. Your Kujo Sara could provide that damage bonus that you need, as well as if you do have her at C6, she's going to be a pretty insane contender for one of her best supports. Her C6 can allow you to get 60% increased in electro critical damage. That is a big bonus, and I highly suggest if you have her at C6 to use her with the Aimiko to get the most amount of burst done. Now, Diona could be interchangeable with the likes of Bennett the likes of maybe another character who has a shield Zhongli, you would really try to get a healer here because there aren't any. So Diana would be a good pick, especially if you have her at C6 to get that nice 200 EM transfer to Yaimiko. Now the last but not final team, you can have Yaimiko, Raiden Shogun, or if you don't have the Raiden Shogun, you can have Traveler, you can have Fischl, any Electro character to help battle your Yaimiko, as well as Shinkcho to really help Electro Charge. Electro Charge is going to be pretty massive if you have the likes of Shingcho. If you don't have Shingcho, but you have Kokomi, which is an even better choice, you can get both heals as well as Electro Charge pretty fast. But I would really suggest having Kokomi on your team because she could be, you know, your main character to use and you can have Yaimiko as your sub DPS. I would highly suggest using this as she's going to be incredible. Now, there is one more team I would like to show you guys. Now, this team has to be <laughs> one of my favorites, I think. Now, Eula has incremental gotten better with more supports that have been added to the game. Eula now has Yai Miko to be your sub DPS, being you can have super conduct happening much more regularly and not to mention your Diana can still help energy recharge your Eula, your Raiden Shogun can help energy recharge your Eula. Yai Miko will be an incredible quick swap, sub DPS, burst support. This will be incredible if you have this team. So I will try to use it and make a video on it in the future. So please do watch that. Now that we have gone over all all that for the next segment of our video it is our final segment i'll be showing you some spiral abyss on both floor 11 and 12 and i don't push the 36 stars for now but hey maybe i'll get to it if i have some time that'll be all
Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video and if you did, consider subscribing to the channel as well as liking the video as well. It will help out my channel loads and I'll see you guys very soon. Goodbye.